In this video, we're going to take a look at a build that combines the fire staff and musket with a focus on the burn mechanic. So if you like dots, and if you like setting stuff on fire and watching it burn, uh, and if you like big range damage, I think you'll really enjoy this build. I think the coolest thing about this build is that all of your burns uh, actually come off the back of very high damage attack spells and abilities. You're going to have a ton of burst damage up front, and then all of that damage is going to be followed by these lingering burns that end up doing quite a bit of damage themselves. And so you're basically a fire mage with a gun. Um, it's a pretty scary combo. <laughs> the other really cool thing about this build is you're going to have six different ways to actually light shit on fire. And it's possible to get 10 plus burn stacks going at once on a single target. There's also some absolutely beautiful synergy between the fire staff and the trap from the musket. And I think this combo might have the strongest lifesteal combo out of anything in the game that I've seen so far. As you can see, the way these talents stack, you can just get an insane amount of spell vamp from your fire staff if stuff is caught in your traps. So this build is going to be quite a bit different from the first two builds we looked at with the ice hammer and the fire shield, where essentially you have one DPS weapon and one utility survivability weapon, and that utility weapon is made to set up your DPS weapon. So either the hammer setting up the ice gauntlet or the shield setting up the fire staff. In this build, we're actually rocking two straight DPS weapons and they're both ranged and they both have a bit of uh, utility within themselves that I think really helps support each other. But it definitely is a bit of a higher skill build where your damage is going to depend very heavily on if you can successfully hit your uh, attack spells and abilities and you don't have quite as much setup to guarantee those abilities hitting. Now this is mainly in regards to PvP, and so while it is a little more challenging, I think there's a very high upside where if you can connect a high percentage of your attacks, your pressure is just insane. In regards to PvE, I think this is actually the strongest build I've tried so far. As you can see, you can just punch way above your weight. Because you're rocking double range DPS weapons, you have a very high amount of damage that you can output without getting hit. And so your ability to solo big beefy mobs is very good. And on top of that, you have the utility and heal of your trap, which is way easier to secure in PvE than it is in PvP. So if you cycle your abilities properly and time your dodges right, you can actually solo elites significantly above your level without ever getting hit. I think this build really shines and is also really fun in group PvE scenarios, so like invasions uh, or dungeons. Because you have double range DPS weapons, uh, you can really just cycle through your cooldowns and obliterate stuff and the gun fire combo is actually very satisfying and then watching all the burn numbers tick through um, it's pretty good it's pretty good all right so here is the full build we will get into the details and synergies of all this stuff in a bit um, but i just wanted to show the full setup here something you'll probably notice right away is that i'm actually taking the other keystone rune in the fire staff in reheat uh, instead of grabbing runes of helios and i'm doing this for a couple reasons but really what it lets you do it lets you fully upgrade incinerate and burn out as well as grabbing all the burn passives we need on the pyromancer side of the tree which is more than 10 points and so that limits us from getting runes of helios since fire staff is our only magic weapon and musket doesn't use mana reheat essentially makes it so we never run out of mana even with our high cost mana abilities such as incinerate and burnout it also lets us avoid taking two of the mana passives over on the fire mage side of the tree which are spell focus and flare and so we can use those points for the juicier crit talents on the fire mage side of the tree in addition to that i think runes of helios really shines with another magic weapon in your offhand and so right now there's just the ice gauntlet but as more magic weapons get released over the course of the game, I think they will all pair well with the fire staff running this rune, because essentially what you can do is cast a fire spell and then rotate through your other two fire spells while you're standing in your rune, then switch to your ice gauntlet and do an ice storm. And all those spells, including the ice storm, is going to benefit from the 30% spell damage increase from your rune. But when your other weapon can't cast spells, I think the rune is a little lower value. And so I think in this case, it makes a lot of sense to focus on the burn passives and crit passives, skip the mana passives, and take reheat. All right, so in this guide, we're going to discuss pretty much everything I can think of regarding this build. So we'll be getting into attributes and gearing. Uh, we'll be going over some considerations for both PvP and PvE. And I think the most relevant thing to both of those is sort of our general combat strategy. So we're going to start there. I think the way you want to think about this build is essentially that your musket is your setup ranged weapon, basically like your sniper rifle. 
and you want to open fights with that whenever you can and then your fire staff is basically your combat weapon and so you're using the musket to get a really big burnout uh, with powder burn at the beginning um, and take another quick pop shot because you get an instant reload with your dodge every six seconds and then after that second shot basically switching to your fire staff and using that especially in close quarters combat because you're gonna have quite a bit of utility between the heal, knockback, burn, and big damage of incinerate, the mobility and burn of burnout, as well as the burst of fireball. So first thing you're going to want to do when you pull your fire staff out is try to get a light attack on them. This is going to initiate watch it burn, which is a 15% weapon damage burn over 6 seconds from your light attack. And then if this crits, that's also going to activate singed, which is another 15% uh, weapon damage burn over 6 seconds. The damage on all your crits is going to be 20% higher because you're running Prophet of a Fire God. Ability crits can also activate the same burn, and your three spells actually have a 15% higher chance to crit and activate this burn because you're running Spell Slinger. Also, anytime you cast a spell, you get your 10% haste for 5 seconds from combat speed. And then all of these burns are going to last 20% longer from Kindle. And since you have let it burn, every time these burns tick, you're going to get a 10% fortify for 2 seconds. I tested it, and unfortunately, Kindle and let it burn don't stack with powder burn from your musket, but they work for all the rest of your burns. Okay, so you're starting out trying to hit that first powder burn with your musket, and then doing a quick dodge into a second shot with the musket, and then switching to the fire staff and trying to secure a light attack. As soon as you get a light attack, what you're looking for with the fire staff is to essentially be pumping heavies, and every six seconds you want to look to get another light attack to keep that uh, light attack burn up on them. I want to add something real quick here I didn't find out till later. The light attack burns do stack with themselves, so you can just light attack over and over again and get this stacking burn effect. I think if you like using the light attack in combat and PvP, this could be a really good option for you. I find the light attack hard to hit sometimes for some reason, and I've gotten pretty comfortable hitting heavy attacks, so I'll probably still do um, a good mix of light and heavies, but this basically makes it so you can chain your light attacks together without worrying about this 6 second window I mentioned. And then in between that, you're basically looking for windows to hit your spells. So Fireball you can throw pretty freely. It has a pretty short cooldown, and you can basically just use it to add to your pressure. I'm going to try to time it to hit right at the end of a dodge animation, an ability animation, uh, or if they're out of stamina. And then you're really looking for windows to use your burnout to secure another burn on them. And also, um, anytime you can get an incinerate, that's going to give you a massive four stack burn. And if it crits, it's going to be even more than that. And so... Um, you're basically chunking with heavy attacks, you're trying to throw a light attack in every 6 seconds, and then you're looking for opportunities for your spells. And then Shooter Stance is a little more challenging to use, especially in the 1v1. I think the best way to use Shooter Stance is if you can get the opening on someone um, from a distance and just rip them with several shots in a row. I think this ability really excels in group uh, PvP scenarios, so like Assaults on Forts and World PvP or Wars, or Outpost Rush. I actually think for this build in general, that's where it really shines, is in group PvP scenarios. Because you're rocking double range DPS weapons, you just have a ton of damage output, you can cycle through your cooldowns, and if you have space, you can really just rip stuff. I think in the 1v1 for PvP, it can be really strong if you can hit all your attacks and abilities, but its biggest weakness is, and I think this is true with most double ranged builds, is that if a melee user, especially with a Great Axe, can get on top of you, and you don't have stamina and aren't able to use your abilities, um, they can really fuck you up, and sometimes it can be challenging to keep space, especially since the musket is very much more of sort of like an opening sniper weapon uh, to enable your burns, and you don't really have any mobility or defensives with it except the trap. And so now I want to talk about the trap, because I think the trap is a really interesting aspect of this build, and I think that could be the game changer for if you figured out how to utilize the trap in pvp effectively i think your ability to 1v1 would go through the roof so my best guess so far on how you could utilize them is to sort of throw out uh this little trap gauntlet where you have one you know a few yards in front of you and then you throw one close to your feet and you basically use those to try to kite around um in this clip you can see i was really trying to force it because i was really trying to experiment with if i could get this guy uh, to step on my traps and uh, this is a really good example because this guy is rocking what I think is the strongest melee build in the game right now which is Great Axe uh, Sword and Shield. As you can see I'm trying to move around him to get him to step in one but it seems like if they know they're there they can actually dodge over him 
and it's really hard to actually secure one. If anyone is a trap master <laughs> or has a, a lot of experience using the trap, especially in PvP and has any recommendations, I uh, would love to see those in the comments. I think if you were able to reliably secure it in PvP in the 1v1, it would be completely insane because of the way the talents stack um, between the trap and your fire staff. So anytime something's trapped, you're dealing 20% extra damage to it, and then you're healing for 100% of weapon damage done. So you're basically healing for 100% of the damage you do while that target is trapped, whether it's with your fire staff or your musket. And this to me is what makes it so insane in PvE is because you can pretty reliably use it to almost like full heal up, yeah, especially if you're able to catch something or several things in a trap um, with an incinerate. Your incinerate itself already has a 20% heal off of damage done. And so if you're doing 20% more damage to trap targets, your incinerate does an insane amount of damage by itself. It hits twice, burns four times more than that if it crits. And so if you can hit an incinerate on a trap target, or several trap targets, you can basically full heal. Beyond that, I think my best recommendation is to just try to catch people off guard with them. And so sometimes you can sneak one out in a combat scenario where if you haven't done it yet, they're not expecting it, but just be careful about how slow you are when you're deploying them. You can really leave yourself open to both ranged and melee attacks. All right, so as far as PVE goes, the approach stays pretty much the same, uh, where essentially you wanna throw out a little trap gauntlet. Uh, in PVE, you can kind of huck them a bit further and even try to land one on them if you want to give yourself a window to start blasting. I think the main difference between playing this build in PvP and PvE is that in PvE you have more time to play with your gun, um, which is cool. So you can get a really strong open and with shooter stance and multiple headshots uh, you can really chunk stuff down and uh, NPCs can run kind of wonky sometimes but they're definitely more predictable than players. Uh, for all of this video I was actually playing without a couple of the deeper musket uh, talents in sharpshooter uh, that give you some increased damage when you're in shooter stance and for getting headshots so like hit your mark um, heightened precision and the keystone rune sniper um, which gives 15 percent more damage to headshots so i really think that uh, with a fully maxed out level 20 musket and this full build uh, in in effect also, for most of the video, I had my lesser gun, and so I didn't have a full int roll on it, and so I wasn't quite at 300 intelligence um, until towards the end of playing the build, when I was able to get uh, an upgraded gun with a full intelligence roll uh, and a slightly bigger onyx. I really liked the first one for the perk on it. Uh, for this build, I think this burn perk is awesome. But all that to say, um, having 300 intelligence stacked with the onyx uh, to give you that 60% uh, extra damage when they're at 100% health combined with all these musket passives to increase damage while you're aimed down scope and for headshots I think will be a really satisfying build to play at 60 with good gear. With muskets uh, it seems like headshots are the name of the game and so it's basically your way to guarantee a crit and really max your damage and then you have all these passives that sort of work with crit also from critical reload uh, if you get three headshots uh, within five seconds of each other you're gonna get an instant reload. I think that talent, if you didn't wanna focus on the headshot mechanic as much, uh, you could trade that one for the other one at the top of the tree called shot, which increases musket damage by 5% if aimed on the site for more than three seconds. I don't really like that one just because I don't like trying to play around being scoped in more often. Um, I like to be able to just quick scope stuff and stay mobile. But if you're looking to post up with shooter stance, um, and just annihilate people from ranged. I think taking called shot could be a good call. And if you're really good with headshots, critical reload is worth, but it can be pretty challenging, especially in PVP, to get three headshots within five seconds of each other. This is a perfect time to go a little bit deeper uh, on some of these weapon mechanics and take a look at what from the musket works with the fire staff and vice versa. So the main thing you need to know is that trapped damage which is the first upgrade of your traps ability, as well as scent of blood, which is the second upgrade of your traps ability, both apply to your fire staff. And so that's what really makes the trap insane in this build is that if you can trap something, uh, even with your fire staff, you're gonna be doing 20% more damage to it for three seconds, and you're gonna be healing for 100% of that damage that you do. 
And also all of your burns actually work with trapped damage as well. So if something is burning, however many stacks of burn it has, if it hits a trap, all of those burns are going to go up by 20% for three seconds. Some of the other ones I tested that I feel like should stack but don't, um, I really wish they would word these differently because the way they're worded, it seems like they would stack. Um, and it's weird to me that some, like trap damage and scent of blood, stack with your other weapon and then some don't just randomly uh, and they don't specify musket only. Um, they just speak in general terms. So like kick them when they're down, deal 10% extra damage to targets with an active crowd control status effect. Slow root stun. So that only applies to your musket. That's not going to work with your fire staff. And then empowering weakness. Hitting a target with an active debuff triggers empower, increasing player's damage to be increased by... The wording on this one. <laughs> increasing player's damage to be increased by 5% for 5 seconds. Um, that is only going to work with your musket, so that's not going to work with your fire staff either. Uh, still good and worth getting, I think. If you get uh, both the empowering headshot buff, which is 10% increased damage uh, with the musket for 5 seconds uh, after you get a headshot, and then also the 5% damage increase from a powered weakness. Uh, neither of those buffs restack, so if you shoot them again, um, you won't get the buff until the buff has expired. Just something to note. And on top of that, um, they will go away if you switch to your fire staff. So uh, you cannot retain those damage buffs uh, if you switch over. As we mentioned earlier, powder burn does not stack with kindle or let it burn, unfortunately, but um, all of your other burns do benefit from the 20% increased burn duration uh, as well as the 10% fortify. Powder burn also does not stack with itself so it doesn't really benefit you to do it, wait for the cooldown, and then attack something because uh, that second powder burn is just going to put powder burn on again. Something else worth noting is that the damage of powder burn doesn't change uh, if you get a headshot versus a body shot. The only thing that changes the damage is uh, your weapon scaling and your, your weapon damage. Um, or if they're in a trap for the three seconds. But if you do get a headshot, your burn duration on powder burn is going to go up from nine seconds to 13 seconds because of chronic trauma. Also, what's nice is if you can open with a headshot, you get empowering headshot. And so that's going to increase all your musket damage by 10% for five seconds. And then um, your second shot is going to have that 10% damage increase um, as well as it's going to uh, give you empowered weakness because they have a debuff on them with the burn so this second shot you get an instant reload if you dodge and then hitting the second shot activates empowered weakness and then so for your third shot you have that 10% from empowering headshot and the 5% from empowering weakness stacked and then you also have backdraft so standard musket shots deal 12% additional damage while the target is on fire so first shot activates empowering headshot second shot takes advantage of backdraft so deals 12% more damage you get an instant reload on it if you dodge and that will activate empowering weakness and so if you take a third shot that third shot is going to have the 12% from backdraft the 10% from empowering headshot and the 5% from empowering weakness and if you've been staring down the scope this whole time you are going to get the 2.5% stackable damage increase um, from heightened precision which can stack up to six times so what uh, 15 percent uh, bonus damage from that if you're staring down the scope for a while and then on top of all that if you also have a sniper um, all your headshots are just doing 15 percent damage straight up and also if you did decide to take called shot instead of critical reload that would give you another five percent and so in total uh, with max stacks of heightened precision so after you've hit six times while scoped uh, if i've done my math right you will be at a 62 percent damage increase um, and then if you shoot something at 100% health while you're in that state, um, you're going to get 30% increased damage to that target from your 300 intelligence. And then you're also going to get 30% increased damage to that target from your onyx, your tier 5 onyx in your musket. And so that target is going to really suffer. Um, and they're going to take, what, 62 plus 60, so 122% increased damage. Um, from that next musket shot, hopefully it's not a headshot, because, ow. Final last thing is that if they're more than 100 yards away, uh, they'll take 15% more damage from uh, hit your mark, and so our 122% becomes uh, 137%. So, man. Some really nice synergy, honestly, with the musket.
a couple super final last things with the musket is that uh, don't forget you can go prone and shoot with it and so you can mostly just use this to be annoying um, and shoot people without them knowing where you're at and then because powder burn uh, basically takes the time of a reload animation you just have to stop instead of being slowed for it uh, you really want to try to use powder burn in combat when you would be reloading anyways so um, instead of reloading and then using powder burn uh, you try to use powder burn right after you take a shot um, so a lot of times you like take a shot dodge and then like use a powder burn and um, that will load up your next big fire shot in the minimum amount of time and i think the very last talent i'll end up getting with the musket when i hit level 20 is weak in defense and that's pretty situational but it's basically when you're against anything with a shield this is going to help a ton because um, it can be super obnoxious both in pve and pvp to go up against shields and just waste, you know, like six or ten bullets and not even shield break. All right, my friends, finally we arrive at the eternal question of armor. Light, medium, or heavy? What do you pick? What do you do? Hmm? Um, I've said it once, I'll say it again. I really think that you can pretty much make any armor type work with any build. Obviously, I think some builds synergize better with different armor types but depending on your play style and how you like to move um, I really think you could make any of them work I am a recent convert from light uh, up to medium and so I've been playing light most of the game and with this new faction gear set I just picked up I decided to jump up to medium and one thing I noticed right away is that I definitely take less damage straight up and so the damage reduction jumping from light to medium is very real uh, you almost get double uh, the physical and elemental resistances that you had in light, it seems like. And so I'm beefier and I can take more hits and survive longer in pretty much every scenario, uh, which is good. To me, the biggest difference between the three is how much stamina it costs you to dodge. So if you are in heavy or light armor, it's going to cost you 50 stamina to do a dodge animation. If you're in medium armor, it's going to cost you 40 stamina. So if you're in light or heavy and you have a stamina bar of 100, which you probably do, uh, you are going to be able to do exactly two dodge animations in a full stamina bar before you're out. If you're in medium, you're going to be able to do three. And so I think that is the biggest difference, is that if you're in medium armor, over the extended period of a fight, you're literally going to have more chances to dodge cancel their abilities than they will have to dodge cancel yours. And so this seemed like a good enough reason for me to convert up from light. And even though I miss the roll dearly, the hop is certainly not bad and I'm getting used to it. And I can definitely feel uh, that I have more dodges in any given combat and I can dodge cancel uh, more things coming my way. As far as gearing specifics go, you're going to want to grab uh, just constitution and intelligence wherever you can get it. Uh, stacking mostly intelligence with a little bit of constitution. I think end game, I'm probably going to try 300 intelligence, 100 constitution, um, just for that 100 constitution perk, which increases max health by 10% of physical armor, which stacks nicely with uh, medium or heavy armor. I think if you were going to go light armor, uh, that one really wouldn't be worth it, and you probably stick with your 50 constitution benchmark and just stack everything in intelligence. I think beyond, I think... In medium armor and heavy armor, once you get to... In heavy armor, you could go more con, honestly, if you wanted to go that route. I think in medium armor, you kind of want to stop at 100 constitution um, and then push the rest into intelligence, any bonus you can get, just to really uh, max out that double damage scaling for both the fire staff and the musket. I think the faction pieces are great pickups, honestly, and they just keep getting better uh, as you climb in rank. You'll see these rank 4 ones... Um, have the resilience on them so you take less crit damage they also have the refresh which reduces uh, your cooldowns they have a gem slot so you can throw any kind of damage reduction gem you want in there um, i've been favoring onyx just because i feel like in pvp i most often die to strength users um, but you could really go any split you want depending on how you're playing and what kind of combat you're in and perhaps the coolest thing is that you can get them reliably and you can get them at every level and you can essentially select any combination of weight that you want and then you can use the runes um, in the rank one part of the faction shop to change the stats from 
whatever base stats they have on them to the stats you want to play uh, with Constitution. And so um, basically you just buy whatever gear you want from your faction vendor, whatever weight combo, and then whichever stats you want, you grab those runes from the rank one part of the um, vendor, and then just take the rune with the gear unequipped to either an outfitting station or a forge, depending on the type of gear, and you will be able to change the stats to whatever you want. And so this is how you can build a whatever weight you want, constitution, intelligence, um, resilient, refreshed, gemmed, very strong uh, PvP and PvE set. If you're going to go the medium route, I recommend getting heavy legs and heavy of one of the three lighter pieces. So either heavy head, heavy hands, or heavy boots. And so that's going to give you two out of five heavy pieces. So you'll have heavy pants with a heavy one of those three pieces, and then all the rest is medium. And this is going to put you right under a medium weight with the max amount of armor. Uh, make sure you don't have a shield equipped uh, because shield is completely useless unless you actually have it on. Um, and even if you're rocking sword and shield, it's really silly, but your shield stats only apply when your shield is actually on. And so it's the only weapon uh, that behaves like that. And so even in sword and shield, you're getting limited benefits from the stats. And so if you're not playing sword and shield, it's just completely useless and heavy. And so take that bitch off. All right, so very last thing we're gonna cover is weapons. Um, so starting with the fire staff, I really think uh, one of the best perks you can get on a fire staff is keen. Uh, because of how much uh, crit synergy there is and the fact that you get burns off of your crits and the fact that all of your spells, your heavy and your light attacks can all crit and then those crits burn. And in this build, you know, all those burns last 20% longer from Kindle and give you 10% uh, fortify every time they tick from Let It Burn. I also think Vicious synergizes really well um, because that just gives you bigger crit damage and you're critting a lot with the fire staff. And then um, Enchanted to give you the light and heavy attack damage I think is also really good because your fire staff uh, light and heavy attacks both chunk pretty hard. Um, and so that's just going to make uh, those pop a bit harder. As far as gems go, I really like the opal in the fire staff, uh, especially in this build because you're using it basically as your combat weapon. So anytime you're dodging, you usually have your fire staff out. And so if you have tier 5 opal, uh, you're going to be benefiting from that 15% uh, increased damage when you're not at full stamina. And so when you're using the Fire Staff, especially dipping and diving around, uh, you're going to have that active a lot. For the Musket, I think you could pretty much take uh, whatever perks you're feeling. I found a really cool one called Crippling Powder Burn that adds a slow to your Powder Burn. I think that's clutch for this build because you're pretty much always trying to start fights with a uh, Powder Burn shot to the dome. And then if they're a little bit slowed off that, it just gives you a higher chance of hitting that second shot, which has those empowered buffs we talked about. And then uh, also uh, will persist if you switch to your fire staff and start trying to hit spells. As I mentioned earlier, I think Onyx uh, fits the musket perfectly, especially in this build. You're gonna have your 300 intelligence attribute perk, which is gonna give you 30% damage on targets at full health. And then if you have a tier five Onyx, that's gonna give you another 30%. So anytime you're hitting something with 100% health, that's 60% extra damage right there just between those two things. And with the musket kind of being our opening weapon where we're trying to lock in that headshot powder burn first thing, I think these two things synergize perfectly with that strategy. And it's also really fun getting giant headshot numbers to start fights. Boom. So that is what I got for you on the burning musket so far. <laughs> it's a pretty fun build if you like ranged weapons and you like fire, I think you will really have a good time with it. If you like this type of content, which odds are high, if you're still here with me, because we're pretty deep in it, we're looking at what, almost the 26 minute mark, so almost the 29th minute mark. Um, really appreciate you watching, and uh, I uh, salute your uh, scholarship and your uh, pursuit of excellence. And um, <laughs> uh, I guess I just respect you from being a fellow student of combat and, uh, and really trying to get after it in New World. So yeah, whoever you are and wherever you are, I hope you're having a really good day or night. And uh, I really hope you are enjoying your time in the New World and uh, 
Really hope some people find value in this video and end up trying this build. I think it's a really cool one and really unique with the burn mechanic. And so, yeah, enjoy. And just to close things out, I'm going to show the build priority for the talents. And so this is just the order I would go in if I was leveling, sort of like priority. Um, obviously, this is very much personal preference. So do what your heart desires here and uh, do what is synergistic with your play style. But this is sort of the way I would go if I was leveling up with this build, and I have good reasons for going this way, but um, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, so yeah, anyways, thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Let me ask you a question. Why is property tax so expensive? I mean, I'm currently too broke to afford a house, both in the real world and in the new world. And that is some shit. If you're a company owner and you tell me you want my tax money to pay for city stuff, I don't want to hear it because you're not defending me against the invasions and our workstations are just getting slaughtered. The workshop just got downgraded to tier two, and so I can't even make steel arrows or bullets in my own home. Hmm. I wouldn't mind it so much if it wasn't due every five days. I mean, 
Damn. Can you imagine if in real life your property tax was due every five days? Shit, man. Anyways. Guess we just gotta make more cheddar. <laughs>